Hi, welcome back. In this class, we'll be working a little bit more with the abdominal region, the core of the body, um, in some twistings and some um, just various poses that you'll find address this area, e both in seated poses, supine poses, and kind of a flow back and forth. So it should be fun and not too long, short practice, which you can add your inversions to later. All right, let's get started. Before we get started, if you want to learn the basics of Iyengar Yoga, I've designed a new course, Foundational Iyengar Yoga. This course is for you if you're a beginner, if you've been practicing for a while and you just want to deepen your understanding, or if you're a teacher and you would like to be more inspired, go back to the basics. So it's a six week course, 18 different classes, and you'll be able to go through at your own pace. You can find more details in the description box below. So I remove my blanket and sit in the center of your mat and you'll adjust your pelvis. Urdhva Prasarita Padasana. So first, with your feet on the floor, knees bent, just adjust yourself. I've adjusted my hips, adjusted my upper back, so sometimes those back ribs get caught, so you can press down and move the front ribs in, lengthen the back ribs, so that the whole back is extended and you're not caught anywhere. So to begin with, you're just going to press the arms down, Bend the knees and reach the legs up. Now, if you require a strap, then you would bring the strap onto the, onto the foot and hold the legs. So you're going to bring the legs into a 90 degree position. All right, I'm not going to use the strap to show each segment of the pose. If you do require the strap, use the strap. And I'm taking my arms over the head. So from here, pressing up into the mounds of the toes, connect with the kneecap, moving the hip thigh down into the hips, and with your exhalation, release your lower back onto the floor. If that is feeling uh, dis uncomfortable for you, you can always bring your hands under your hips, okay, for anyone that's got some uh, tension coming there by raising the legs. All right, so I'm going to remove my hands, but if you need to use the hands under the back, you do that. And then if you're not using the hands under the hips, bring your arms over, stretch your arms. You can hook your thumbs so that you can use your arms to keep that length through the trunk. All right, as you lift the legs up, you can see your kneecaps. You draw your kneecaps up, inner knees rolling back. So if your leg's turning like this, you want the front of the thigh to face you. Back of the thigh faces the wall, and the sides and the inner side face each other. Okay, so just <coughs> adjust your legs, press up through the toes, through the mounds of the toes, but at the same time, oftentimes we just ask you to spread the toes, draw the toes down towards you, and that's to lengthen the back of the, the heel. So <coughs> if you've been practicing a while, get that length through the back of the heel, and then stretch your toes up toward the ceiling. So not shortening like this, but keep that length as you press up. Okay? And just be there. Notice if the abdomen is starting to come up, move the abdomen with each exhalation down. And then we're going to bring the legs into 60 degrees. So as you keep connecting the femur bone down into the hips you bring the legs down to 60 and we'll hold there so again if you need the hands behind the back if you're feeling any strain that supports you then bring your hands under your hips extend the arms and then inhale come back to 90 and then exhale coming back to 60 Connect with the legs, keep the legs firm, and they'll come down to 45. Abdomen toward the floor. Inhale, come up to 60, and then to 90. If at any point you're not using a strap and you feel that you need to use that strap, for instance, if you wanted to use the strap for 60 degrees, 
then you can use the strap. 45 degrees, use the strap. But keep the abdomen moving down. All right, as I said, I'm not going to use the strap, but use the strap if you require it. Change the cross on the fingers. And then coming <clears throat> back down into 60, 45, stay breathing, stay with your breath. And now 30, extend through the heels, draw the toes back, inner thighs moving down toward the floor, and then coming back to 45, back to 60, and up to 90. And we're going to do it independently with each leg. So you can do this at any point that we're doing um, the legs together. So you come down into 45 with one leg. One leg stays at 90. And then exhale, coming down to, for the first one was 60. This is 45. And then coming down to 30, extend. And then come back up to 90. So we're all doing this together. And now coming down to 60. So keep the legs together, close together. Not perfectly close touching, but a little bit further apart. Thinking about scissors, how you open a scissors, how those blades stay in close proximity to one another. And the bolt would be right through your hips. So the hips are the pelvis and the abdominal area staying grounded and then coming down to 45, and then 30. Extend through both legs, both heels. Extend through the ball of the foot. Abdomen moving toward the floor. And then inhale, lift up. Coming back to 90 degrees. Now you can do that one more time, independently with each leg, or take both legs down. So you choose. We're at 90 degrees now. Exhale. Coming down to 60, stay with your breath. 45. If you're having any tension in your back, then bring your legs back up to 90. And then 30. And 90. And stay at 90. If you want to use the strap at this point, use the strap. We're going to do one more time. Not holding as long, just going up and down. 90, 60, 45, 30, 45, 60, 90. 60, 45, 30, 45, 60, 90. A little bit faster. Use your exhalation as you bring the legs down. Inhalation as you bring the legs up. Stay aware of what's happening through that core center of your body as the abdomen moves down. Stay with the breath. All right, and then bend your knees. Bring your knees into your chest. Relax the abdomen. Spread the lower back. Come back to that more stable, relaxed inhalation and exhalation. All right, bring your arms over your head. Straighten your legs, and you're going to come up. So here on the floor, you're at a, an angle, 90-degree angle with the legs and the arms. You're going to come up, come up into Dandasana, OK? So now, from Dandasana, we're going to do a little bit of a flow back and forth. So you keep your legs straight. Keep your arms, first of all, on the floor. And you'll press your arms down, lift your hips up, and come over with the legs. Keep the legs straight, and then come back up. Reach your arms up. Coming toward Paschimottanasana, bring the arms up again. Urdhva Hastasana, hands down onto the floor. Use your hands to press, lift you up and over, each time coming closer to the floor. And then here, 
Urdhva Hastasana, Paschimottanasana, pressing down, legs up and over, and again coming up, exhale, lengthening, and then coming back down. This time you'll come over, and if you're able to keep the arms long, instead of bringing the hands onto the floor, you'll keep the arms long, bring the legs up, extend the arms over the head, lift the hips, keep the arms long, come into Paschimottanasana. If you're not able to lift the hips, then keep the hands on the floor, lifting up and over. Going a little bit faster, stay aware of the abdominal area, moving toward the lower back. Legs are straight, arms are straight, stay with your breath. Just letting the back round, bring some warmth to the spine, and seeing how the abdomen is connected to that lift up and back. And then come back into Dandasana. Be in the center of your mat. Good. So you're fe feeling a little bit more warmed up, I think. We're going to do one more um, with the legs coming over. All right. So you're going to come into Urdhva Prasarita Parasana, like we did earlier. And I want you to keep your hips on the floor as much as possible. You can use your arms and start to bring your legs over. And once you bring your legs over, catch the sides of your feet. Keep the hips moving down and start to bring your legs towards you any amount. You can catch your heels and you'll take your heels. So feeling your back round there, feeling your hips lifting slightly up, but your legs moving towards you. Move the front of the thighs toward the backs of the thighs. And then coming back. So now we're going to do that at the wall. So I'm going to turn. Bring the legs up. And then bring the feet over. I'm going to come a little closer to the wall. I want to have my hips moving down as far as possible. So I'm going to take the legs down a little bit further, legs closer to me. Hips are a little bit lifted, more lifted than they were before. And then you can take your hands to the wall and the hands on the feet. Walk your hands, your feet down a little bit more, but keep moving your lower back and your hips toward the floor. Press into the toes, release the legs down, and then coming back, Urdhva Prasarita Parasana, and then bend the knees, bring the knees into the chest. And here, you're going to get a little bit of a momentum going. So rocking back and forth. Feel how the abdomen is connected there. And then pop yourself up and come to Malasana. OK, we'll do that a couple more times. Coming down, rounding, over the back, rolling, just like you did when you were a kid, and then Pop yourself up on both feet. Bring your arms forward. And then take your hands behind you. Hold on to the ankles. Release your head down. As you do that, release the abdomen toward the lower back. Deflating the abdomen completely. And then bring your arms out. Sit on your hips, and then bring the feet together. So here I am, just coming out of 
Malasana. And I want to be on the sitting bones, more on the front edge of the sitting bones, or the middle. And we're going to come into Navasana. So first you'll bring your calves parallel to the floor and take your hands underneath your knees and draw the chest toward the thighs and reach the legs up. As you straighten the legs, bring your arms out. Connect the upper arm back into the shoulder. Stretch through the fingers. And now bring the abdomen toward the lower back. Breathe. And then come back up into Malasana. So getting a little bit of a momentum going. Come onto the feet. Lengthen forward. And then coming back, straighten the legs this time, completely, abdomen, legs, breath. Now you can see how I'm falling back here, so the back is moving back. So you want to keep that back lifted and moving inward. And one more time, malasana, so get that momentum. Reach forward. And then coming back, you're going to sit a little bit further back on the hips. So we'll do Navasana one more time. This is actually called Paripuna Navasana. So you lift the legs up, extend the legs out. Two arms are like rows, like you're able to row with those arms. So lifting the arms up, stabilizing with the arms and the legs. Stay with your breath. Now we'll come into Ardha Navasana. So just come back into Dandasana. And you'll take your hands behind you, interlace the fingers. Your back is a little bit rounded, elbows moving towards one another. Come a little bit further back on the backs of the sitting bones, more to the lower back. And again, feel the abdominal area moving towards your lower back and raise the legs up. So now the legs are going to be a little bit more in line with your head. So you're lower. Stay there with your breath. And then come into Paripuna Navasana again. Raise the legs up. And then Coming back, Hashimotanasana. Stay with the breath, release the abdomen toward the lower back. And then coming up, you're going to lay down on your back now. And we'll practice Tatara. Parivartanasana. So here, we're doing a little bit of a twisting, but we're also keeping the legs extended. First, we'll start with bent knees, and then we'll go to straight legs. So <coughs> depending on your practice, depending on your body condition, if you haven't practiced this very much, keep your knees bent. For those of you that have been practicing longer, we're going to <coughs> lift the legs up, like in Urdhva Prasrita Padasana. And I'm going to lift the hips up, jump the hips just over to that left side, and then keep the legs long. I'm moving over toward my hand, bringing the legs over to the side. Now come back to the abdomen. Turn the lower abdomen toward the upper abdomen. And then bring the legs back into the center. And then over a little bit to the side. When you come over to one side, the tendency is for that shoulder to lift, the arm to lift. So just keep that weight on the opposite side that you're bringing the legs to. And then as you go down, use your breath. Stay with the abdominal area. Use that breath to help you stay in that outer side of the body. And then come back to the center. We'll do one more time. For those of you that that was just too much, you can bend one knee also and then come over. Otherwise, take both legs over like I showed you before. One knee is bent, 
one leg is extended, rolling over to the hip. Keep that outer shoulder on the floor. So using the arms to help you keep that, ch that chest on the floor as well, back chest. And then coming back, coming to the center, and then coming to the other side. And then bend that lower leg again and extend. So from here, the hip is moving away. The leg is lengthening toward the heel and that foot is moving toward that opposite arm. As you get over, turn the lower abdomen toward the upper abdomen. Turn the lower chest toward the upper chest. Stay with the breath. And coming back to the center. We're going to do one more time. So <clears throat> we'll do it with straight legs this time. If you want to use bent knees again, do that. And then exhale, coming over. We'll go a little faster. And then coming up and go over to that side. Back to the center. One more time. And then coming back to the center and rolling over that hip. Keep the shoulders grounded. And then bring the legs back up. Bring the knees into the chest. Relax the abdomen. Bring your arms over your head. Pop back up into Malasana. Reach your arms forward. Keep your hands in front of you. Just release your head. And then sit back. And now we're going to do a couple twists. Okay, so have some support. First, come into Marichi Asana 1. So extend the legs, Dandasana. Bend your right knee. Bring your arms up, coming forward to that Pachimottanasana action, lengthening. And then take your hand, catch your fingers. Coming into an open twist first, inhale, lengthen. Turn from the lower waist, lengthen, exhale, turn. Draw your shoulder back. Stay with your breath. Be aware of the abdomen. Be aware of that straight leg and the bent knee. Press the bent knee, the foot into the floor, and turn. And then coming forward, reaching the arms up. And now we're going to turn toward the leg. Bring the arm on the outer side of the knee. You can first take the arm around the knee, turn. We want the abdomen moving close to that thigh. Take the arm over, come into Marichi Asana 3. Inhale, lift. Exhale, turn. From that lower abdomen, turning toward the leg. And then release. Extend the arms up. Coming back to Dandasana, straight legs. Bring the other foot in. Reach the arms up, come forward toward Pashimottanasana leg. Bend the elbows. Reach that arm down so the lower shoulder cuts under. And then turn the arm and catch the fingers. You can catch the fingers if you can catch the hand. You can take the hand, take the wrist. So working your hand up until you get a little bit more purchase on that. Press into the foot, lift up, turn the chest. As you turn the chest and roll that shoulder back a little bit more, you can catch more of that wrist. Turn the back waist, turn the back chest. And then release. And again, bring the arms up, Urdhva Hastasana. Leaning back, take the elbow and the forearm and the hand around that thigh. Turn, turn the abdomen, turn the chest, and then bring the arm up. 
start to draw yourself down lower. You can bring, turn the toes in, start to walk that upper arm down, and then just press the arm and the leg against one another. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, turn. So that back abdomen, back waist is coming toward the front waist, toward the front leg. So twisting is always done with your breath, very conscious and aware of what's happening, nothing aggressive, releasing, lengthening, and letting go. And then release. Coming back to the center, reach the arms up, coming into Marichyasana 3 again. Turn the toes in toward that straight leg. Bring the leg over towards you. Release the abdomen. Walk your arm down as much as you can. And either repeat what we just did or turn the hand and catch, catch the fingers, catch the wrist, whatever you can manage. Inhale, lengthen up. Exhale, turn. Again, deflating the abdomen as you turn, lower back moving toward, or the abdomen moving toward the lower back. Look over your back shoulder. And release. Extend the arms out. Urdhva Hastasana, bring the leg in. Turn the toes toward that leg. Lean back. Release the abdominal area, walking down. Bringing the whole left shoulder under to get closer to that leg. You can help it by pressing the leg and pulling down more. And then turn the, at the elbow, walk the hand back and reach the other arm back. Catch the fingers. Inhale, lift up. Exhale, turn. So instead of leaving that knee over toward that other leg, bring more, you can adjust your foot again, bring the knee back so that when I move the knee, I turn the middle back. Stay with that breath. And look over your back shoulder. And release. Coming back into Pachimottanasana. You can take your hands beyond. You can catch the hand. Releasing the head down. Deflate the abdomen. <clears throat> Coming forward, any amount. And then coming up. Okay, to release the abdominal area, we're going to come into a supported Purvottanasana. So you're going to come to the edge of the chair, bring your heels onto the floor in front of you, and then you're going to lift up, press the feet down, and lengthen through the abdomen. As I press into the chair, bringing the buttocks up, lengthening through the front body, shoulders moving down toward the hands, and then coming back. You can start with the knees bent. So depending on how that was for you, lift up, press the arms down, roll the shoulders back, buttock lifting, up, tailbone lifting up, thighs parallel. So we're bringing now some length to the front body. And then inhale, come up again. Stretch the toes down, lift the hips, roll the shoulders back. And then release. Come onto the chair, take your legs wide and then begin to go forward. Hands on the floor, keep your hips on the chair. And then you can take either the front legs or if you can bring your arms back, take your arms back, release your head. Hips down, release the abdomen by deflating the abdomen. 
Use your exhalation and release. Just be there with your breath. And then turn around, come into half downward dog. Again, lengthening the arms, the legs, and lengthen through the abdomen. And then we're going to come forward and we'll lie down for Shavasana. So have a blanket for support. Bring that just up to the shoulders. If you don't require the blanket, that's fine. Just lay down on your back, adjust your pelvis. Lengthen the lower ribs. So when the lower ribs are moving too much towards your hips, the abdomen moves up. So by taking your hands at the lower rib cage, moving those lower floating ribs up, automatically the abdomen descends. Okay, so feel that. Again, lower ribs moving down. Lift the lower ribs, pinning the hips so that you get a little traction. Lower back is lengthening. And then roll your inner arms out. Extend your legs out. And then just let your feet separate. Inner thighs rolling out. Back of the head lengthening. And now here, just allow the breath to come to the abdomen and release the abdomen completely so that you're extending your exhalation and you're bringing breath and release to anywhere that you can feel any tension or still holding on in the abdominal area. It's an emotional center for us, so it's an area to just be aware of when you're tightening the abdomen and there need not be that tightness there or where you're gripping. So in Shavasana now, just completely release the breath, relax the abdomen, relax the chest down. With each breath becoming more passive. Feeling the movement of the breath in the body. So it's not just in the abdomen, but you can feel the breath in the rib cage, in the chest, in the front of the body, but also in the back of the body. So feeling that kind of undul undulating rhythm as you breathe. Letting the breath get smaller and smaller. And then just stay. And then you'll be, and then to come up. Enjoy your Shavasana. Namaste. Thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed that practice. It's an invigorating practice. It helps to get that uh, fire in the body going right from the center. So have a good day. I'll see you next time. Namaste.